Sorry for the wet hair, but I just got out of the shower. Welcome back to another Fun Facts channel episode. So today we're going to get into some fun facts about the Breakfast Club, which I probably should have had breakfast with the Breakfast Club. I was just thinking about that um, as I'm filming. What is your guys' favorite like older movie? I would love to hear in the comments. What are some things you love for breakfast? So I had... English muffins with um, egg, cheese, you know, the typical egg, cheese, lettuce, and gave me a mild stomach ache. I don't think I could eat egg anymore because just a little sh short story back in December, I think I got a flu because I threw up at like two in the morning the night after like a really like lots of food. So it could have been just eating a little later, but I ended up throwing up and then I had an egg sandwich the day after because I called in and then, um, I felt really bloated and sick, like I was going to be sick, so ever since that, like I've been having issues eating eggs, so I think it's just could be like a trigger from that time. Um, however, I opened these already, but I'm going to try some snacks as we go through fun facts, because what's without snacks without a good movie? A Cheeto popcorn, I don't eat these ones that often. Should have been breakfast, but that's okay and the loads of cheesy garlic bread flavor. So let's try them. Well, I've already tried them, to be honest. I don't like the crunchiness on camera, but. Mm -hmm. I was worried you would taste a lot of Parmesan too but you really don't. You taste a lot of garlic. It almost reminds me of sour cream and onion. Very similar taste. And for these ones. Mm -mm -mm. I like these ones. These are a little less sharp. The garlic one has a stronger taste, I find, so I kind of like these ones better. Uh, I don't know if you could compare the two, but I'm doing it anyways. So, anyway, while we're, while I'm munching away here, well, let me know in the comments what, like, your favorite older movie is, or your favorite movie growing up, if you grew up with The Breakfast Club, if you like The Breakfast Club, I would love to hear it. Let's get into some facts. Rue. Let's get into some fun facts of the Breakfast Club. Let me know again. Don't forget to hit that like button. Go check out my other channel. It's all about funny animals. Um, so let's go and scoot over there to go check that out. Um, get your popcorn. Get your chips ready. I got my popcorn ready and my chips, but mostly my popcorn. Let's get right into some fun facts. Okay. <clears throat> Number one, one of the Breakfast Club scenes was improvised. The film's gut-wrenching heart-to-heart where all five kids spill deep, dark secrets was ad-libbed. Was ad oh, interesting. So, so they just made up, like, why they were in detention. I haven't watched the movie in so long, so I gotta rewatch it and come back to this. But, yeah, that's, that's interesting. That's really cool. Under the, the real secrets. No. Number two, The Breakfast Club was supposed to be the first movie in a new film series. The movie was initially conceived of as a franchise starter with subsequent entries checking in on the characters. Number three, Breakfast Club originally um, included a dream sequence. What does that mean? A dream sequence in which Allison, Allie, um, Im imagines Andrew as a glutinous Viking, Bender as a prisoner, Claire as a bride, Bri Brian as an astronaut, and herself as a vampire was cut from the final version. Oh, I wonder why. Oh, like, I guess, like, a dream was, maybe, maybe it was too much, too dark, I don't know. Anyways, okay. Number four, The Breakfast Club was originally featured a scene between two of the school's teachers, another scene that featured a pair of high school teachers 
Dr. Lang, a social studies teacher and a gym teacher, Robin was also chopped from the final version. Um, number five, the Breakfast Club's janitor, Carl, had once been a star student at Shermer High School. Uh, as a student, Carl, the janitor, was Shermer's high, highest man of the year. Oh, that's neat. Number six, Rick Morinus was originally cast as one of the Breakfast Club key characters. Rick Morinus was originally cast as the janitor in the Breakfast Club, but was eventually replaced due to creative differences. He wanted to play the part as an over-the-top Russian stereotype. The role was ultimately played by John Capellos. Um, number seven, the Breakfast Club's actor took a Broadway-like approach to rehearsals. The film was rehearsed in a manner more similar to that of stage plays. Number eight, Emilio Estevez was originally going to play the Breakfast Club's bully. Emilio Estevez was originally slated to play Bender, but Hughes couldn't find anyone else who was right for the Andrew role, so Estevez ultimately switched and Bender gig went to Judd Nelson. Number nine, Molly Ringwald was originally asked to play Ali Sheedy's role. Similarly, Molly Ringwald was first asked to play Allison, but she wanted the Claire uh, role named Kathy in the first draft of the script. Hughes eventually let her have it. That's awesome. I'll be honest, I didn't know Molly Ringwald was um, a big star be like back in the 80s or whatever, um, mostly because I've seen her in... Um, the Secret Life, the Secret Life of an American Teenager. Um, that's where I kind of first saw her in, and then I noticed she was in other things. And then I watched The Breakfast Club, and I was like, Oh, she she must have been a big star back then. And I think she was, um, probably st and still is to this day. Don't get me wrong, but it's it's just funny how you find things out after you've watched them on something else. Like, Goldie Hawn is another one, too. Um, I can't remember what I've seen her in, but I know she was a big, like, like she's a big star. Her daughter's a big star. Her daughter runs Fabletics. Anyways, number 10. A lot of now A-listers auditioned for The Breakfast Club. Other actresses that could have played Claire, Robin Wright. Jodie Foster is another one. I watched her in The Silence of the Lambs, and maybe I'll do a fun fact on that one. And Laura Dern, who all auditioned for the part. Meanwhile, John Cusack was considered for the role of Bender, as was Nicolas Cage. He would have been good, too. John Hughes made a cameo in The Breakfast Club. Another parent to look out for, Hughes, who had cameo roles as Brian's fa father at the end of the film. Number 13... Or, sorry... Uh, the next one here, Cheese stood in for the snow. In all she she Sheedy's hair in the breakfast club, Allison's dandruff, which she sprinkles to make it snow, was made of oh, Parmesan cheese. No way would I be able to stand that smell. I would be not breathing while talking, and people would be like, what? You're fired, basically. <laughs> no, thank you. Not in a day would you caught me doing that. Ugh. Couldn't you find, like, fake snow somewhere else? Like... Can't you make it that like more like ooh, how is that how is that okay? It's nasty. Uh, ooh, sorry, oh my god. Okay, moving on. Let's move on to the next one over here. <laughs> the Breakfast Club location is a familiar one to John Hughes fans, like a number of other Hugh films, including Weird Science, Ferris, Bueller's Day Off, Sixteen Candles, Pretty in Pink, and National Lampoon's Vacation. The film is set in the fictional Chicago suburb of Shermer, Illinois. I have never watched Bueller's Day, the Fer Ferris Bueller's Day Off until like, I think it was like uh, quite a few months ago. My friend was like, what, you've never seen that? Like, yeah, no, I have never seen it. I've never seen Sixteen Candles. I haven't seen Pretty in Pink, Weird Science. I've seen National Lampoon's Vacation. Depends on the one you, you are talking about here. Um, so maybe I'll do some more. There's so many facts about these and so many cool like Easter eggs about um, these channels here. Not all of the Breakfast Club's cast members were quite high school aged. 
Judd Nelson was the oldest cast member at the time filming. He was 26. I want to... Is it because you have to be 18 plus to basically be, like, a full-time actress or actor? Because I always was wondering about that. Like, people in high school musical, they they were 20... In their 20s when they played 16-year-olds. Why is that? Do they still look like they're 16? Weird. What is that noise? That was weird noise, eh? <laughs> Sorry, I heard some weird noise. It was like in the dishwasher, so I hope everything's okay. Okay, next one is all Sh- Ali Sheedy didn't speak until a third of the way through The Breakfast Club. She doesn't speak for the first 30 minutes of the film, which has 97 minute runtime. I wonder why, I can't remember why. Let me know if you know why. Maybe I'll do a little quiz at the end. Okay. Um, okay, let's see here. Next one, it was originally proposed that there would be periodic sequels to The Breakfast Club. Checking in, oh yeah, we read that. During some opening shots of the high school, a well, a wall can be seen with the phrase, I don't like Mondays carved into it. This is a reference to a 1979 shooting in San Diego in which a 16-year-old Brenda Spencer killed the principal and a custodian and injured eight students at an elementary school across the street from her home. When asked why she did this, she said, I don't like Mondays. This livens up the day. Okay, I want to read this now. Brenda... Yeah, let's read a little blurb of what she did, why she did it. So by this, she by this she was referring to the fact that she had just fired thirty rounds of ammunition ammunition into the Grover Cleveland Elementary School in San Diego, California, using a semi-automatic rifle. Okay, just so you guys know, this is a trigger warning, which I should have mentioned before. After unaliving the school's principal and custodian and wound, wound, wounding eight children and a first responder, Brenda Ann Spencer barricaded herself in her room for more than six months, six hours until she finally surrendered herself to the thor- authorities. The early eight years of Brenda Ann Spencer um, was born in San Diego. Born April 3rd, 1962, she grew up relatively poor and spent most of her early life with her father, Wallace, with whom she had tur- a turbulent relationship. She would la- later claim that her father was abusive towards her and that her mother just wasn't there. Uh, that's sad. Wallace was an enthusiastic gun collector, and his daughter appeared to share his interest in this hobby early on, according to acquaintances who knew Brenda Spencer. She also dabbled in drug use and petty theft as a teenager. She was frequently absent from school, but whenever she did attend class, she raised eyebrows a week before she carried out the pew-pewing that would be make her infamous. Brenda and Spencer allegedly told their classmates that she was going to do something big to get on TV. Unfortunately, that's exactly what happened. The horrors of the 1979 Grover Cleveland Elementary shooting. On the morning of January 29, 1979, children began to line up outside Grover Cleveland Elementary School in San Diego, California. They were waiting their principal to open up the school gates. Across the street, Brenda Ann Spencer was watching them from her house, which was filled with empty whiskey bottles and a single mattress that she shared with her father. She had skipped class that day and later claimed that she had washed her epilepsy medicine down with alcohol. As the children lined up outside of the gate, Spencer took out the 22 semi-automatic rifle and that she received a Christmas gift from her father, then aimed it out in the window and began firing at the kids, the principal, of the school, Burton Rag was killed during the attack. A custodian, Michael, was killed. Oh my god. For, wow, okay. I want to see the imprisonment. That's what I wanted to read. Of Brenda Ann Spencer. In the aftermath of the attack, it was revealed that Brenda had shot at the school one year earlier with a BB gun, though she damaged the window. She didn't hurt anyone that time around but she had been arrested for that crime as well as burglary but ultimately received probation just a few months after the gun in the bb gun incident 
Spencer's probation officer has suggested that she spend some time in a mental hospital for depression. But Wallace Spencer reportedly refused to admit her, claiming that he could handle his daughter's mental health issues on his own. Instead, he purchased a we the weapon that his daughter would later use to target the school. I asked for a radio, and he bought me a gun. Brenda said, "I felt like he wanted. I wanted. I felt like he wanted me to unalive myself." So the teen's attorney considered pursuing an insanity plea, but it never came to fruition, and although Brenda Spencer had only been 16 at the time of the shooting, she was charged in, as an adult due, due to the severity of her crimes. As reported by the San Diego, she pleaded guilty to two counts of murder in 1980, and although nine counts of attempted were ultimately dismissed from the case, Spencer was sentenced to concurrent terms of 25 years to life in prison for her crimes. Her attorneys continue to argue that the treatment she received from her father was allegedly um, included SA, um, SA, or was there was like AB, like SAB, was the real reason for her actual senseless violence. So that's pretty interesting. I've never, um, to this day, six year old Brenda remains locked up in the prison, California institution for more women in Corona. I was always just really interested in, like, true crime, but um, that's that's actually quite interesting to see that that's where the um, movie was taking place. So I can't believe that that even happened. That's a wild story. I'm sorry for all the victims that had happened to. Um, good thing she's spending the rest of her life in prison. It's sad to see a child, though, that young do something like that. I'll be honest. I'm not trying to take away from any kind of any kind of um, victim here but it is sad when you hear about a household and she just doesn't see any hope for herself she, so she does that and obviously there was I don't know obviously I shouldn't say obviously there might have been some like jealousy or you know just she was hurt and depressed okay Moving on, Judd Nelson came into his audition dressed and acting like Bender. His attitude was so off-putting that the receptionist at the audition called security. Oh, I wonder why. Nelson's commitment to his character remained a problem through shooting. He was almost fired for harassing Molly Ringwald on set. Oh, who is he? Judd Nelson. I wonder why. Hmm, interesting. One of those, oh, I'm too cool for you kind of guys, maybe? I don't know. And we'll do one more fact, because I got carried away with the uh, Brenda Spencer case there. Brenda Ann Spencer. It was Ali Shetty who suggested that David Bowie quote that opened, that opened the movie. That's cool. Nice. Nice little fact for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed your popcorn with me, and I hope you guys enjoyed these movie facts. Also, hopefully, you enjoyed the little my little interest behind the true story of um, of the school, and maybe I'll do more of those, like the true story behind these movies, documentaries, add in some some possible true crime. I don't know if I could if I want to do true crime ever. I'm not really like. I like, I'd rather listen to it than do it, in that sense kind of thing. But that's it for me. You guys have a wonderful day. We'll chat soon. Bye now.